Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel Rather Be Reading and today I'm bringing to you my October book haul. Alright guys, October got a little out of hand with book purchasing which we'll get into but we will as always start off with the library books that I picked up this past month. Um, I will just quickly mention I also on top of the books that I've got here picked up Paper Girls Volume 5 um, but it had holds on it and I couldn't renew it and so I've already read it and returned actually just returned it to the library earlier today so I don't have it but I did technically collect that from the library also this past month. So the first one that I have here is The Gods of Guilt by Michael Connolly. This is another one that will technically be a reread because I think this is the last one that I read in the Mickey Haller series. So my experience with Michael Connolly was that I started with the Mickey Haller series and read that whole series and then went back and started the Harry Bosch series um but all basically every book that Michael Connolly has ties in so you basically just need to read every book of his kind of in publication order so I have technically read this but it's not actually the last one in the Mickey Haller series I don't think I think it's the last one I read that was published when I read the Mickey Haller series but I think since then and I've gone back and started the Bosch series that there's been more Mickey Haller ones part um, published after this or at least one I think published after this anyway I can't remember what this is about um specifically I'm sure I'll generally what happens is I read like the first few chapters and then I'm like oh yeah that's this one but I really enjoy Michael Connolly's writing it's just crime fiction following a detective sometimes a lawyer sometimes I like court more court case based but I love all of that type of thing really enjoy crime fiction looking forward to reading this so I can continue on in the series and next I got from the library Far From the Tree by Robin Benway so this is one of the books that I need to read for one of my around the year and 52 books prompt um, th there's a prompt on there about reading a national, I think it's a national book award nominee or finalist. And I didn't own a single book on my TBR that was a nominee or finalist. The, not to shade the national book award, but generally the books that seem to get nominated in that are not books that I'm particularly have even heard of sometimes or I'm interested in, but this did, I'm not sure if this won, I think this might've won in whatever year that it was, um, in like a YA category. And this is a book that was really hyped a couple of years ago and I had heard a lot about. So it's a YA contemporary about, I think it's about three siblings who were all like adopted. So they don't know each other. They were all adopted out as children, but I think they have the same biological mother. And I think one of them has also recently had a child and has given the child up for adoption. And so the story is about the three siblings. Like I think she then through that experience then wants to find her biological siblings and it's about them all meeting each other. I think two of them were adopted out, sorry. And I think one of them maybe grew up in the foster system. It's just kind of about that. Like I said, I heard very positive things about this and I needed to read it. Like I said, when I went through the nominees, I was like, please let me find one that I'm actually interested in. And I'm definitely interested in this one. So I picked this up because I need to read this before the end of the year. And then also picked up North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. So I think it was last month or the month before um, I had hauled Middle March by George Eliot. And that was going to be my next classic that I was going to read. Um, but Michelle from Michelle Lexi and I have decided to buddy read that. And we're going to be buddy reading it in February, I think it is. Um, so I returned that to the library because I'm going to get it out closer, obviously, to when we're going to read it. And so I picked this up to read in the interim. This is one of the classics that I've been mentioning. I think it's this one. I can't remember if it's this one or Wives and Daughters. That's the one that I've... They kind of bleed together and I can't remember which is which. I kind of want to read both. I mean, I want to read both of them. But this is the one that I saw in my library. And so I grabbed it. I've heard this compared to Pride and Prejudice, which excites me because Pride and Prejudice is one of my favorite classics. Um, but I'm really looking forward to reading this. I think I'm going to really enjoy it. So I managed to pick that up. I then picked up... A Million Worlds with You by Claudia Gray. This is the third and final book in the Firebird trilogy. It's the YA sci-fi trilogy, which I've really been enjoying. Really excited to have my hands on this third and final book so I can read it and finish out the trilogy. Um, I then also picked up Enticed by Jessica Shervington. This is the sequel to Embrace, which I read last month or the month before. And that book was just okay, but I'm kind of, I think this is book, I think this series has got like six books. So I'm giving it one more to really draw me in. And then if I don't love this one a little bit more, then I probably won't continue. But I'm going to give this one a go and see how I, how I go. Because these are like bigger for these type of books. Like it's well over 400 pages. So there's that. And then the final book that I picked up from the library this past month, past month is another one that I picked up, um, 
for my Around the Year in 52 books, there were two that I needed to pick up from the library to fill the final, final two prompts that I have to go. So um, I picked up Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. So if you recall, I've mentioned previously that there's a challenge, a prompt this year that is about reading a book either by Shakespeare or inspired by Shakespeare. And I read A Mid Midsummer's Nightmare by Cody Kepling. I'm thinking that would fulfill it. But then as far as I could tell, that wasn't really a retelling. Um, so I did a bit of Googling about Shakespeare retellings. And this is one that I had like marked as like to read on Goodreads that I've been wanting to read for a while. And this is apparently a retelling of The Winter's Tale by Shakespeare, which is not a Shakespeare play that I'm familiar with. Um, and this is an area of fiction that I'm very interested in, which is rape fiction, because I believe this is about a cheerleader who is, I think she's at cheer camp and she's raped. And then I think she falls pregnant from that um, situation. And it's about like her story. Um, so I'm very interested. I've heard very mixed reviews of this, but like I said, rape fiction is something that I'm generally very interested in. So I'm looking forward to picking that up. So they're the library books. Now to quickly touch on before we get into the, all the physical books that I purchased, we will quickly touch on the ebooks that I purchased this past month. I purchased three ebooks this month. The first one is Things We Didn't Talk About When I Was a Girl by Jeannie Vanasco. Now this you'll actually be seeing in my marked as to read video. So um, one of my subscribers, The Story Keeper, recommended this book to me. Um, and it sounded like something I was definitely interested in. I marked it as to read. And then literally like a day or two after I got that recommendation, it came up in my, in like the Kindle, I think it was like Kindle daily deal for like a dollar. And I was like, wow, I just heard about that book. And so I bought it. Um, and it's nonfiction. It's part memoir. I think I don't, well, it's, me it's a memoir, but it's about a woman who was raped. Again, like I said, I really like, um, not just fiction, but books generally that deal with like rape and rape culture. Um, she was raped and I think from what I understand it was by a friend of hers like someone that she was a friend um, was friendly with raped her when she was a teenager and she's been struggling to deal with it ever since has, has constant nightmares about it and it's 14 years later and she reconnects with this man like she reaches out to him and wants to meet with him and talk about what happened um, and it's about that story it just sounds it's extremely fascinating so I'm really looking forward to reading that. Uh, the next one was one that I had pre, I think was in my marked as to read video that went up last month was Lying Next to Me by Greg Olson. So this is a thriller. It's about a couple and I think they've got a young daughter and they go on like a holiday like a to like a lake and the husband's like out on like some kind of sporting water sports equipment in the middle of the lake when he sees his wife on the shoreline being abducted. And he tries to get to her, but he doesn't get to her in time and she's abducted. Um, and then I think it's got some, there's like, I've written here, sus other couple. I think there's like another couple who are staying in like, like a cabin near the lake as well, who like are really suspicious. I don't really know. It just sounds intriguing. Like I said, I like thrillers. Um, and then the third one that I purchased is another thriller and that is Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. I was so excited to see this on um, sale on Kindle for really cheap because it's Riley Sager's most recent release that has been really hyped. I own Final Girls in like physical copy and I, I do want to read his books probably in, I believe it's a male, um, read his, yeah it is because it's one of those whole situations of using a pen name that's like gender neutral as a man. Anyway, um, he um, has another one in between the one about it's set at summer camp and I want to read that one as well but like I said this one was cheap and all I know about this is that it's this is the one that's about like a woman who is down on her luck and then she comes across this job that's advertised that's basically like about house sitting at this like really expensive well-to-do hotel and it's like extremely well paid but it's like weird rules like she's not allowed to have anyone over she's not allowed to leave the apartment like honestly it sounds like my ideal um so it's apparently like very creepy and it's kind of like a bit haunty a bit a bit a lot of got, got a lot going on i've heard really good things about it so i'm excited that i managed to get my hands on that so they're the ebooks let's now move into the huge pile of physical books that i purchased in october so first off we have my normal monthly order um that came in at the early on in the month so first off i have here endless night by cressley cole this is i think it's the second book in the arcana chronicles which in a series that honestly I can't remember what it's about. I think it might veer between like kind of straddle the line between YA and new adult. Um, and I think it's got something to do with the tarot. 
I'm not sure. I own the first book and I think I own like the third or fourth book. And so I'm just slowly like purchasing them um, so that I have the whole series because that's something that I do. So I have this one. Um, I then purchased After Ever Happy by Anna Todd because again, this is a series that I own all, but I think, I think this is the last one that I need. I think I have the whole series now. I really don't know whether this is a series that I'm going to like, but... I own it. It's contemporary. It's new adult. I believe it started out as fan fiction about Harry Styles from One Direction, which is a choice. And the movie came out recently, which kind of gave the book a resurgence. But I have this that I now have the whole series. And then the last one from that order was Never Night by Jay Kristoff. So this is one that I've read. Um, I listened to it originally on audio and I really loved the first two. I think I gave the first one 4.5 and then I think I might have given the second one 5. I, I know the third book's recently come out and I really want to read it. But I read the first two on audio so I keep waiting, hoping that my library's going to get the third one so that I can... But I don't know how long I'm going to wait before I give up and end up getting the third one so that I can finish out the trilogy. But I decided that this was a trilogy that I wanted to own. I quite like the spine. And so I purchased that. So that was my normal monthly order. Then at the beginning of October, as we've discussed numerous times, I was off work for three weeks as I was like finishing, finished a job. And then I had three weeks off before I started my new job. And so I did some shopping in that time. And while I was at Target, um, I picked up a couple of things. So the first thing that I picked up was... Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. So this is the latest novella collection in the Shadowhunter Chronicles. Um, and I saw this there and I own all the other Shadowhunters books and thought, well, I should pick this up because I want to read this eventually. Um, so I think this is, again, similar. So they're all around the Shadow Market, set around the Shadow Market, which is a something that features in the Dark Artifices series. But again, I think it follows all different time periods throughout Shadow, Chron Shadow Hunters Chronicles, all different characters, etc. And it's kind of, I think this is a bridge between the Dark Artifices and the new series that she has coming out soon. Can't remember what that's called. But like I said, I saw it there and was like, oh, I should get it because books are always cheaper at Target. So I thought I'll grab it while I see it for cheap. So I grabbed that. Then I grabbed my most exciting purchase of the month which I'm sure you've seen many a haul recently, is the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This was right at the beginning of October when I got picked up these books and I couldn't believe, like when I saw it, I didn't realize that this had come out and I saw it at Target and it was there for $40, which I don't know if that sounds expensive in other countries, but here that is an amazing price. I think in Dimmix, when I saw it, one of the previous copies, it was like 65. Online, this was like 54. So I was really excited to see this for $40. That is a bargain. Um, and honestly, it's not as thick as what I think any of us expected it to be. And I, from what I understand, that's because there are less illustrations because this book is obviously so long. I haven't had a look through this yet. I'm probably at some point in November, the month we're in now, or maybe even in December, going to not read it, but I'm just going to flick through um, and like look at all the illustrations. I might mention it in my recent reads video that I do that week when I do that and just mention maybe some of my favorite illustrations. If that's something you'd be interested in, but I'm so excited to have my hands on that. And then the final book that I picked up while I was in Target is... Pieces of Her by Karen Slaughter. Karen Slaughter is not someone I've read anything by, but I do own Pretty Girls and I think The Good Daughter. They're both on my TBR. And I want to read every one of her books that people talk about. So she writes basically thrillers. The majority of her books are in series. And honestly, I'd love to read that those series as well. And I probably will at some point. But her standalones get raved about. Apparently, they're like... She gets compared to Gillian Flynn a little bit. I, from what I understand, her books are apparently very dark, very gruesome very confronting, which I am 100% here for. I'm most pumped for um, Pretty Girls, but like I said, this is one of her standalone ones and I saw it there. Um, like I said, books are always cheaper at Target, so I thought I'd grab it while it was cheap. So there's that. Then we have a pile of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books that I picked up secondhand while I was at Savers with my mom. So this is really, the other three I can kind of make excuses for. Like I say, I'm at Target. I don't buy books brand new, like out like that too often. But it's the seven secondhand books that I really didn't need that really probably shouldn't have happened, but it is what it is. So let's talk about them. First, we got Year One by Nora Roberts. So this is the first book in, oh, 
Chronicles of the One. I was about to say, I can't, don't know what the series is called. Um, I haven't read a lot of Nora Roberts. My friend Emma has read a bit by her, and I think she's actually read this one as well. And I've heard pretty good things about this. It's a little bit different from Nora Roberts' normal stuff, because I think it's like a dystopian fantasy type of um, series. Like I said, I saw it there. It was $4, so I figured, why not? Because that's the type of attitude I have when I'm buying secondhand books. I then picked up House of Sand and Fog by Andre Dubas III. And I'm not going to lie, I think I got this book confused with another one. I think there's a book, and I, maybe I'll put it on the screen if I can figure out what it is that I always get confused because I thought this was a thrillerish book. But then I read the synopsis and I was like, yeah, that doesn't sound... I think this is more about an immigrant. So I don't know, maybe I'll end up loving this and it'll be like kind of a um, hidden gem that I find that I wasn't expecting. But I, I bought it. Um, next, I grabbed Baby Teeth by Zohi Stage. This is a um, horror thriller book about a uh, creepy child. I believe it's about someone whose daughter is like evil, evil child. You know how it is. So I grabbed that. And it's so funny because I literally had just been thinking um, like in some recent other times that I'd been in secondhand bookshops that I never see some books that I would expect to see in secondhand bookstores and this author that I'm about to show you is one of the ones that I thought you think I would have seen some of his stuff there um over the years and I haven't and then literally when I was there I saw one and that is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami now Haruki Murakami is an author that is very praised and I find incredibly intimidating and I don't know why I from what I I have this idea in my head that his books are incredibly literary and I just feel like I don't know I've got this opinion in my mind that I'm too dumb to read his books. I don't know why that is. So I don't even know what this is about, but I just thought, you know what? It's a Haruki Murakami. You've never read anything by Haruki Murakami. You should give one a go. And like I said, I never see um, any of their books in secondhand bookshops. And so I bought it. So there's that. I then picked up Bear Town by Frederick Buckman. Frederick Buckman is an author. I think I've mentioned that I want to read um, his entire um like back catalogue. This is the book of his that I'm most pumped to read because it deals with rape. This is a story about a town um, that's like a big hockey town. Like hockey is like the main thing that this town like focuses on. And I think it's about a girl who accuses one of the stars on that hockey team of rape. And But I think it follows like several different perspectives um, like throughout the town and how that accusation affects the town. I've heard very good things about this. And like I said, the, the premise of this sounds right up my alley. Then I grabbed uh, How to Build a Girl by Caitlin Moran. This is one that for some reason in my head I thought was like a nonfiction um, book. So again, it's one that I grabbed and I didn't actually know what it was about until I got home. And then I read the synopsis and I was like, oh, I think this is fiction. Because it's like, my name is Johanna. I'm 14. I've just decided to kill myself. I don't really want to die, of course. I just need to kill Johanna and build a new girl. I don't know what that means. And then I think it's set in the 90s, which I'm a 90s kid, so I'm all about that. And then the final one that I picked up um, at Savers was Dear Daughter by Elizabeth Little. Like this cover. So this is a thriller. I had never heard of it before, but <laughs> I love thrillers in case you didn't know. Um, I don't know. I think it's told from the perspective of someone who you know is like not a good person. I don't really, I can't remember what it was about, but <laughs> it was a thriller and so I bought it. So that should be where the haul ends, but it's not because I also had, it was just one of those months where one my monthly orders, one came in right at the beginning and one came up in right at the end. So I have another monthly order here to show you. So the first book that I have from that order is The Rumor by Leslie Cara. This is one that I've read. It's a thriller that I read earlier this year that I personally, I've heard some mixed reviews of this. A lot of other people I've seen didn't love this, but I loved this. It's one of my favorite thrillers that I've read, really enjoyed it. And so I wanted to get my hands on a copy so that I can have it on my shelf because I love to have copies of my favorite thrillers. So I bought that. Um, I then finally picked up Slayer by Kirsten White. So this is the book that is told in the Buffy the Vampire Slayer universe. If you're new here, you might not know that Buffy the Vampire Slayer is my favorite show of all time. I freaking love it. Um, and I honestly don't think I'm going to enjoy this. The I think I'm just too much of a fan that anything that they get wrong about it is really going to bug me. But at the same time, I can't not read it. And I also think this is the first in a series. I've heard pretty poor reviews of it, honestly. But 
I couldn't not have it. So I purchased that. And then the final one that I purchased in that order and in the month, the final one that I have for this haul is Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. This is the third and final book in the Remnant Chronicles. Um, I am excited. I think this, the first one might be coming up on my TBR maybe for like the early part of next year, hopefully, because I've really been pumped to read this. It's a YA fantasy series and it's about a girl who escapes an arranged marriage at the start and you know that there's the prince that she's escaped from and an assassin have, bo have both like chased after her but you don't know which is the prince and which is the assassin and that intrigues me so much and I've just heard really good things about this trilogy as a whole and I think it's one that I'm going to enjoy so I finally I've had the first two books for ages but I finally purchased this third and final book in the trilogy so that's it those are all of the books that I purchased in October hopefully things can be pretty sedate with book purchasing in November because December may be a little bit bigger because of Christmas and things although I'm not sure I really probably need to keep things my my TBI is just out of control like it, it is just out of control so hopefully we can keep things you know a little bit more reserved in the coming months but I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of the books that I've hauled if you've got any thoughts on them what you guys have been buying lately I would love to know please like this video if you liked it please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel that is all I have for this video today bye guys